Hey, good evening, Prayer Valley family. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope all is well. Uh, I want to greet everybody, just tell you that God is doing some awesome things. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in each and every individual as well as corporately. Um, I want to invite everybody to be in church with us this Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, that's Prayer Valley Family Worship Church at 14172 Avon Avenue in Lathrop, California. We are one of the we are one of the most happening little country churches this side of heaven, and the power of God is moving. I mean, week after week, we're seeing God do miraculous things. This is the year of the miracle, right? The year of the miraculous. Yes. And we've been seeing God do uh, change people's lives, marriages restored, people getting saved, people getting delivered. We've been seeing people grow. That's one of the hardest things right there for Christians is growth. Yes. And we yes. get saved or... God does something miraculous in our lives and, and uh, you know, we come to the Lord and then uh, growth, you know, that's that's something that we we have to focus on. Yes, it's very it's important. Something that we, yeah. and, and, the, and uh, we're, we're, uh, we're not only growing in numbers, which is not the uh, thing that we keep our eyes on, but we are growing spiritually and in numbers. God is, yes. is uh, the church is, 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 God is adding to the church. Uh, the Holy Spirit is drawing people. He's wooing them and drawing yes. them. Yes. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about church tonight. But before I do, I want to remind everybody and invite everybody that Easter Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, we have prayed and decided that we are going to meet directly at Cavello Writing Center. Rather than going to church at 9 a.m., we are going to meet at the Cavello Writing Center uh, about 9.45, 9.30 or so. It actually starts at 10 uh, we're going to meet there, and man, we're going to have a, an, an awesome time. We're going to have a community Easter egg hunt for all the kids. I think I'm there's excited. there's thousands of eggs, I'm really thousands. Excited, yes. All right, um, we're going. It's April fourth, which is Easter Sunday. Um, we're going to have uh, music. Uh, Prayer Valley is is going to be bringing worship music. Um, we're going to have a message delivered by a powerful uh, anointed servant of God. Uh, we're going to have pony rides. Come on, guys, pony rides for all the kids. Uh, we're going to have a food truck out there that people can 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 get food. Uh, we're actually talking talking to Pastor Frank Saldana about bringing their food truck out, which is going to be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, I hope that comes through. Uh, we're going to have bounce houses and slides, uh, obstacle courses for all the kids, and and lots of other games. And Easter eggs. East. I mean, lots of other games. Yes. There's lots of things going on. Yes. We're going to have a great time. Everyone is invited. It's free. Uh, but I want to make sure that everyone, uh, all of our Prayer Valley family is there. Amen. Don't miss. This is Easter, man. We're going to go have a good time. Yes. And, and uh, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we want to invite everybody. It's, it's only about 15, 20 minutes, 15 minutes from, from the church. Yeah. Literally. It's, yeah. At, it's at 3975 Canal Boulevard in Tracy, California. You just go down the 205 and get off. Uh, on, I don't remember which one you get off on, but you get off, takes you over to Canal Boulevard, and you're there. I mean, it's that simple. So everybody, I'm expecting y'all to attend. Yeah. Unless you have a previous engagement with family or something, right. uh, I'm expecting everyone to attend, especially our leadership. We need to support. Yes, we're going to we be do. sharing. We're going to be there get, with the Gathering Place Church. Yes. We're coming together in fellowship. Awesome church over in Tracy. Uh, they have an awesome pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Cleve. And his beautiful wife, and, and of course, um, we have the Lowry, Mike Lowry, and, and Nicole, and, and they're all involved. So we're going to be having a great time, all right? And so we want you guys to come out uh, and celebrate with us. Everyone, Amen. this is a way for us to get to know each other even better and spend time yes. hanging out with one another. We can, it's a fellowship. Like, yeah, yeah, watch all the kids have a good time, and, and all of us have a good time, too. So listen, uh, I told you I was going to be talking a little bit about growth and and, and, and uh the responsibility of growth and, and what it's what it really is what's the requirement for growth or why why do some people grow and some people don't and so it amazes me uh, sometimes how how many people come to church Pastor Beth that I see sitting in church Sunday after Sunday and sometimes year, year after year after year that's right sitting in church they're committed right they're, they're faithful in their, their tithes and their offerings. Right. They're faithful to when we do special events, they show up, they fellowship, they have friends, right? Right. And, and they, they're sitting in church 
hearing the same sermon about the same portion of Scripture as everyone else in the, in the building, whether it be a life lesson or just a good old-fashioned challenging word of repentance or maybe an encouraging word or maybe a word on miracles or healing. Right. And, and, and a good word from God. And, and you, watch, you watch the dynamic and you discern the dynamic and you see people like that, that, are, that are just getting fired up to receive the word. Mm -hmm. And you see them. And you see them receiving what God is saying. Right. And then you see those that, uh, you know, that are unaffected. I mean, one walks away deeply affected right. and, 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 and the word has challenged them and brought, uh, you know, got, they, they have received it, so to speak. Yes. And the other completely is indifferent and unaffected to the message. And it's the same scripture. And I hear everybody say, well, if it don't apply, let it fly. And I hear people say, well, you know, that was for me, or that was for me, or that might affect. Listen, the word of God does not return void. Right. It's for everybody. Yes, it is. It doesn't matter whether you feel like, you know, oh, well, that was directed for me. If you come hungry for the word. Right. Right? That's right. You're gonna whether it be life lesson or a good old challenging word from God. You need to receive it. Amen. And a lot of people don't. They're not receiving it. They're just sitting in church and in their pew. Right. And the reason they call it a pew is because they stinketh. And they're not allowing the word of God to penetrate them. They're not allowing the word of God to get down in their soul and spirit. Yes. This happens because of the condition of people's heart. Right. It's because of the condition of people's heart that they can block so to speak, they can just block out. I mean, and, and it's not like they're purposely blocking it out. I mean, they're they're listening, right? But they're not hearing, right? They're listening, but they're not conceiving. They're listening, but they're not knowing. Right. They're listening, and they're not participating. Wow! And I see people all the time, and a lot of these people are doom doom are, are naysayers, are not not even they're they're they're, they're a. a uh, Debbie Downers and and yeah. and uh, and what do you call a man that's a Debbie Downer? I don't know. Uh, uh, Dead beat Don. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. they just they're just not there because they hunger and thirst for righteousness. Right. They're there uh, because of their religion. They're there because of their doctrine. They're there because of their denomination. They're there because of. You know, they, and I'm not saying they're not believe. I'm not saying they're not believers. Right. They're not saved. I'm not challenging anybody's not salvation. Right. I'm just talking about growing in the Lord, man. We have a responsibility we do. to grow in the Lord. Amen. If you want to hear about people that are hungry for God, you need to read the eighth chapter of Nehemiah. Just that chapter. Just read about the. Just read the eighth chapter of Nehemiah, and that's a challenge to you, you out there, Prayer Valley family. Read the eighth chapter of Nehemiah, and check out the preachers, check out the messengers, and check out the people, Amen. and find out. Right. Nehemiah is a great, a great scene of God's people coming together to hear God's word. They had been in captivity, wow. in bondage, uh, for years. I mean, abusive bondage, enslaved, in bondage for years. And so, in Nehemiah chapter 8, for those who don't understand, some of these people, it was like the first time out of captivity, the first time they're really getting to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. Some of them had heard the God, word of God many times. Right. Some of them have, were seasoned in the word of God. But the Bible says that they all came together in unity to receive the word and hear the word and receive a messenger. And they were obedient. The messenger would tell them, stand up. And they'd stand up for the word. He'd say, sit down. They'd sit down. He'd tell them, listen, and they would listen. He would say, you know, pay attention, and they would pay attention. He would say, receive this, and they would receive it. And it's not saying one or two. It was all of them. They were in right. unity. Right. They were in unity. All different personalities, all different uh, financial backgrounds, all different, uh, you know, they had all, they, well, maybe not financial background because they had all came out of slavery, but all different mindsets. How's that? Yeah. All different mindsets. Yeah. Some people looked at it 
You know, they looked at their freedom one way. Other people looked at it like, man, I, what am I going to do now? Amen? Amen? Because the Bible says where much is given, much is required. Right. We have responsibilities. So they've been in captivity all this time. And, 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 and so they get a chance to hear God's word. And the Bible tells us that they all heard and obeyed. Not just some of them. They obeyed. They wanted to hear God's word. Right. They didn't care if it was something that, you know, tickled their fancy or if, if it was just something. They wanted to hear God's word. And when they heard God's word, they wanted to get it down in their soul. Amen. Down in their spirit. So God has really been dealing with me about our application uh, of his word, about us applying it to our life. And one of the reasons that many people are in the condition that they are is not because they don't go to church or not because God doesn't love them. They're not because it's because of the condition of their heart. Right. It's because of the condition of their heart. You're not allowing God's word to heal your heart. You're not allowing to get it into your spirit. You're not letting it get past your ear gate. Right. You may hear it, but you don't do anything with it. You're not a doer of the word. Right. You're not applying the word. So the word falls, you know, like the seed in the book of Matthew. It just falls on unfertile ground. It falls amongst the weeds. It falls amongst the thorns and the thistles and the stones Sometimes you get it for the day, you get all fired up, and boom, it springs up. But by tomorrow, you're done with it, right? Yeah. Read that chapter also. God has really been dealing with me about that ability too. About our ability to open our hearts and minds to the arena of faith. It's an arena. It's a dispensation. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? Amen? So we have to open our, our hearts and minds to that arena to get the word of God into our soul, down in our soul, in our heart, down into our soul. There are things, and some of you say, man, I don't know, you know, you've got to get it down inside. That's continued right. yeah. exposure and continued application. Even when the situation's not good, even when the circumstances aren't pointing in the right direction, even when it seems like all hell is breaking loose, continued application of the word of God. You understand that in war, if you stop using your weapons, you're probably going to lose. You understand that in war, that if you stop, uh, if you stop, uh, you know, if you just hunker down and just give up, right. you're going to get captured. Even though the Bible says the weapons of our warfare uh, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You need to realize that God is spirit. And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Mighty in the spirit. They're mighty in the spirit. This is why you've got to get the word of God into your soul, your soul, your heart, your mind, the, soul, the mind, the psyche. Yes. And it will come, and when it does, it will come into agreement with the spirit of God that's already in you because of your salvation. Right? But rather than just letting another message pass by, you know, we need to grab hold of it. In Nehemiah's time, these people showed respect, hunger, obedience. They showed that, that when the word was delivered, they showed that they, were, they wanted it. They were ready for the word. They were ready for God. I mean, how many of us come to church ready for God? Amen. Yeah. You know, I, I do. sometimes you can feel the oppression yeah. and people say, man, there's a devil there, man. It ain't got to be a devil. It's right. just sister such and such or brother so and so. Right. They just got an attitude or an oppression on them. They are under, the, you know, they're just not allowing God and the spirit of, That's they're right. not allowing the spirit of the Lord to do anything. That's it. Right they're right. just holding back and they're just not yeah. letting God do it. And they'll sit on you, mm -hmm. and 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 of course we, you know, and, and and the devil too. I mean, they'll 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 let the devil infiltrate their heart and mind, but they won't let God. Isn't that amazing? That is. Uh, now maybe you're above all this, you know this this. Maybe you're all above this. Maybe you're out. Maybe you're smarter than the preacher, or you're smarter. Maybe you're a better worshiper than the worship team. Maybe you're a better musician than the musicians. Maybe you're a better, you know. Maybe you're a better. 
uh, a pastor's wife than the pastor's wife, or maybe you're a better Sunday school teacher than the Sunday school teacher, or maybe you're a better women's leader than the women's leader, or men's leader than the men's leader, or maybe you're just better all, all the way around. And so, you know, uh, you know this, this, the, this. You, you, you're above all this teaching. You need something deeper in it. Listen, you need to get saved. Is what you need. Amen. You understand? There's no big eyes and little use. This is the kingdom of God, and God establishes things the way God wants it. And, and listen, if, if, I, I could sit under a, a young man, a, a young woman, an old man, an old woman. I could sit under whoever God sent to be a leader. Right. Amen. Amen. And be obedient. That's that's what we have to learn to do. We have to learn to be obedient. We have to be available. We have to be, uh, you know, um, we have to be teachable. Teachable. Definitely. We have to be trainable. That's right. We have to be usable. Amen. We have to be approachable. There you go. Amen. All of those ables. Yes. Right? Amen. We have to be all of those things. So I, I don't know about you, but I personally don't believe anyone should come to the house of God not receiving what God is saying that day. Yes. Amen? Amen. I mean, I don't think that God just picked that out for Joe Blow over here. I think it's for everyone in the house. Amen. There's going to be something for you. If yes. you got up and got dressed, you need to be there to receive. And you need to get your hands up and worship God. You need to get your heart up and receive what God is saying so that God can do what he wants to do in your life. Can you say amen? Amen. And quit hiding. <laughs> Some of us. It's just unacceptable to try to, to come and just sit on God. That's it. It really is. Or to have somebody, or to just, you know, I don't know if prideful and just move me. If you move me. Yeah. You know, move me. God's going to move you all right. So, I mean, if you're not hungry for God's word, why are you in his house? I don't get it. If you're not hungry for God's word, why are you even in his house? Why don't you go to Burger King if that's what you're hungry for? Or go to go get a pizza or something. Why if you're not hungry for God's word, if you're not hungry to worship God, right. why are you in God's house? Right? Amen. Let me explain something to you. You must listen eagerly and intently. Intent. There must be some intention behind why you're there. I got up. I intend to come here and worship God. Amen. I intend to enter in and let God enter into me. I intend to receive what God has for me today. I'm not here because it's Sunday, it's the Sabbath, and I'm here to have, you know, or, or I'm, just, I'm not here because I, I go to this church. I'm here because I intend to participate. Amen. Right? If, if, if you don't let God's word get down in your soul, it's because... You know, it, it becomes, or excuse me, if you don't let it get down in your soul, then it becomes just another word, just like all the rest of the words of the world. Right. It's just a letter. It just falls by the wayside. It's an epistle. It's just somebody, it's just like somebody talking and you don't have, you could, don't even pay attention. You don't even care. A lot of so-called Christians are just not hungry for anything that requires them to participate. I don't have time. I'm tired. You don't understand. You don't understand. listen. You know. You know. You know. Jesus took time for you. He took time to go to the cross, in the garden. He said, "If this cup can pass from me, let it do so. But nevertheless, not my will, but Thy will be done." You're just too caught up in you. you it's all about what you want, how you right. feel, how your will is. I didn't feel good enough, or I don't. I don't feel like I'm getting anything. I don't feel like I'm getting one of the greatest cop outs I hear people. Why? Why, why wouldn't have you been? I, I wasn't getting fed. Yeah, it's because you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You can't you can't grow where you're not planted. All right. Yeah, I said idiot. People people listen. If you're willing to learn, you can learn. The, listen, out of the mouth of babes, the words of babes will astound the wise. List foolish things will astound the wise. Amen. You don't you don't you don't have to have Methuselah teaching you. Uh, what you need is an anointed man or woman of God, a child of God. That will that will uh, share with you the word of God that He's dropped in their spirit. So listen. People have become complacent. People have become lazy. People have become indifferent. I don't care what they say. You know, it's not going to affect me. They say they want more, but they're not willing to change their heart and mind to receive more. Well, this is the way I am. This is the way I think it should be been like this and it's going to stay like this and if it changes I'm not going to be happy with it people talk about progressive Christianity all the time progressive Christianity is 
Not that we accept, uh, you know, vile lifestyles uh, to continue living in vile bondage as being okay. We accept everyone into the kingdom of God and into the house of God. But we will pray for their deliverance and we will pray that God set them free. Listen, if you think that people that are bound by homosexuality, drug abuse, alcoholism, uh, uh, you know, marital abuse, if you think that people are bound by, that are bound by pornography, if you think people are bound by, uh, that are thieves, that rob and steal and, 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 and do the things that people in the world, a lot of people in the world do, if you think that all that is vile bondage and you don't think that your religion is vile bondage, you got another thing coming. You're going to have to learn that, that that's just as big a stink in the nostrils of God as all sin. And this is why we got to get off our high horse, yeah. get off our religion, and start letting the Lord do a work in us as individual lovers of God. You're not going to stand before the Lord for me, and I'm not going to stand before the Lord for you. I'm not going to give an excuse for you. The Lord's not going to get me up there, and I'm going to give an excuse. Lord, you know, here's what you need to realize that when, you know, you're going to have to, uh, uh, Sister Sally, Lord, you're going to have to excuse her because, you know, the Lord's going to hold Sister Sally accountable for herself. Amen? Amen. So the truth is that many have waxed cold because of the lack of knowledge. They're not letting the knowledge of God get down in their spirit. Now, the word knowledge, I'm not talking about agnostic, agnostic, agnostic type knowledge. I'm talking about the knowing, the word in the Hebrew that goes all the way back. Knowledge is not about intellect. It's about intimacy. It, it's, all the, it's, it's about knowing. And you can't know what you're not intimate with. The Bible says, if you go back to the very beginning in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that Adam knew Eve. That word knew, was where we get the, the, the derivative of knowledge. He had the knowledge of, of Eve. And the Bible says that when he had the knowledge of her, she conceived. Right. Right? Now that means he knew her in an intimate way. She was vulnerable. He was vulnerable. They were intimate. Their, the knowledge of one another becoming one flesh that they, it, it created a, 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 a conception. And this is what happens in the spirit when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, that we receive the, a knowledge in the spirit. We receive a knowledge, a knowing. Uh, we receive a, 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 through our vulnerability and our intimacy, and we begin to conceive. Right. Right? Like Bishop Filthy would say, I'm pregnant, and I know who the Father is. Right. I've conceived. Because I know God, I've conceived vision, purpose, destiny, power, anointing, our gifts, yes. right? Yes. Fruit, all of those things. But all of the things are absent when we, when we don't have that knowledge. Uh, it takes focus, direction, attention, energy, concentration, application, diligence, all of those things. So my challenge is to you is to come determining with intent, intend to receive. Amen. I realize that we live in a world where we have so many distractions and, and we're all clamoring, you know, everything is clamoring for our attention, but you're going to have to give your attention to God because one day all this is going to mean nothing and you're going to stand before him, right? Amen. So listen to me. My challenge is to, to you today is to... To come with intention and expectation. Amen? Amen. What you got, Pastor Beth? Um, you know, I was reading in Galatians this morning and, and this afternoon. And in 3, uh, chapter 1, it says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your very eyes? Jesus Christ was clear, clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to lean to learn just one thing. From you, Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning with the Spirit? Are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing? If, if it really was for nothing, does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you because of you observed the law or because you believe what you heard? And I was kind of, kind of dissecting this. And see, the Galatian believers had become fascinated uh, by false teachers, um, almost that they had been bewitched. 
and they were drawn kind of fleshly to mysterious things without recognizing uh, dangers. And, and I was thinking, man, what's entertaining us today? You know, what's, why are we kind of sidetracked today? Right. And Paul stressed out that just as they begun their Christian lives in this power of the Spirit, that they should grow by the Spirit, getting into the Spirit, amen? But the Galatians, the Galatians had taken a step backward when they insisted they would keep their Jewish laws. So they were kind of stepping back instead of stepping forward. And we must realize that we grow spiritually because of God's work in us and by His Spirit. Amen? We must follow God all the way. Amen? Not part of the way, but all the way. Amen? Sometimes we got to get our fleshly mind out of the way, and we got to get the mind of Christ. And we must follow God all the way. James 4, 8 says, if you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. Amen? And that's so true, because if you're afar, he's afar from you. So we've got to get back to drawing close to him. Amen. The Galatians knew that they had received the Holy Spirit, and the closer you get to the, word, the Lord, the more you grow. Amen? And that's what it's all about. That's the answer. Growth. We're gonna, the growth is when we start to lean on the Lord, and we start to focus on the Lord, and we get to know the Lord, and we have a true relationship with him. And that's what we're going to get through. Amen? Amen? That's how we're going to grow. We're not going to get grow when we put everything first but God. Come on. And we get so great. busy with life that we stop. And we, we our focus isn't no more on the Lord. We get sidetracked. I don't know. What kind of what are we entertaining today? Amen? And a lot of us are focused on, oh, the COVID. Or, oh, you know, churches aren't open. Oh, the restaurants are open. Come on. Let's get back to focusing on the Lord. Let's have church. Let's get in and let's worship. Amen? Yes. Because that's what it, what's going to make you grow. So that's the answer is getting to know Christ. Amen? To, me to meditate on his word daily. Come on, meditate. To listen. To talk to him. And me and Pastor, we've been having communion together, man. I love having communion with Pastor. Amen? Every day. Every day. We we've communion. been having it. We have communion every day. I get day. up every morning early before it's daylight. And, and, I, and I get in my word. And I'm reading my word. And I'm talking to the Lord. And it feels so good. And I feel so refreshed. And I feel the growth. Amen? Amen. But see, Paul hoped to get the Galatians to focus, and, uh, focus once again on Christ as a foundation of their faith. Colossians 1.29. And I love how Paul describes his way. For this purpose I also labor... Striving according to his power, which worked mightily within me, dependently, depending fully on the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Come on, we got to get that down in our spirit. Yes. And Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live. Come on. We move and have right. our being, as some of your own poets have said, for we indeed are his offsprings. Amen? Amen. And this is the foundation oh. of Christ. This is the foundation of Christ. The, Spirit, the Holy Spirit who lives inside you will enable you to grow and to be strong. That's Amen? True. You cannot improve your flesh. Are you hearing me? It's it isn't going to improve. You might gain weight, but it ain't going to improve. You Amen? Might lose weight. Or you might lose weight for your, or your worldly gains. Amen? See, we need more of God. We need more of Jesus. That's right. That's the key. And I was listening to this. It says, you can do all the good you want. But it's the blood of Jesus that saves you, that makes you whole. And I love this last scripture that I'm going to close with, Pastor, is that in Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Are you listening? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be to the test and prove what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Come on. That's Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that's what God gave me. So allow yourself the experience of letting the word of God get down in your soul and spirit uh -huh. and, and begin to apply it to your life. The simplest yeah. things. Very. They're like, that doesn't apply to me. Apply it anyway. It's God's word. It applies to you. You just may not know it. Right. You may, if you don't, you don't know. You try it. You might like it. Right. Well, I mean, we're always saying, well, I, how come I'm not growing? How come I'm not growing? Are you in your word? Right. Are you praying? Are you seeking the Lord like you're supposed to? Right. Amen. Not not once a month, not on just Sunday, every day. Every, every day. day. That's right. That's what Christianity is. It's a it's, it's listen, a life. Righteousness is being right before God. It's not being self righteous. It's not all about all the good works you think you do. Righteousness means being right before in the eyes of God. 
Right. Amen. And that's what we strive for, so we can grow into the image of Christ right. and be right before God. Amen. Listen, Prayer Valley Church, and everybody listening. If you're listening, you're part of Prayer Valley family. We love you. We love you. Amen. We want to encourage you. Be in church with us this Sunday yes. at 9 a.m., 14172 Avon Avenue in the beautiful city of Lathrop. We're going to be having a time. Man, the girls are going to be, and the, guy, the, girl, the, the worship team, the girls and the guys are going to be bringing some worship that's yes. going to, listen, it's going to, it's going to usher in the Shekinah glory of God, the weighty presence of God. So I want to invite you guys to be in church with us. Don't forget about Easter Sunday. We'll be announcing it again next week, and we'll be announcing it on Sunday. Listen, Amen. we love you guys. We'll see y'all here, there, in the air. Amen. Amen.